this is yet another video which I'm not sure is ever going to get uploaded to YouTube. Um, I'm never sure how much people care for what people are interested in. Um, and these carburettors are for a car which I've never actually done a video on on the internet um, because it's my own car and I kind of get fed up with doing videos sometimes. But this potentially has some interest to people who like not only SD ones but minis, Jags, Rovers, whatever happens to have twin SU carbs. These are off my 1979-1980 Rover SD1 VAS. They're um, HIF 44Es or um, HS6s, whatever. They're the one and three quarter inch throttle. SU carburetors <coughs> linked as a pair so that would be the near side or left bank this would be the off side or right bank and that would be the link rod between the two basically my VAS I took it to the rolling road it got tuned up because it initially it failed its MOT on emissions and basically the guys adjusted it to get it through an MOT but really the um, needles and the jets are worn so my uh, my uh, idea is to rebuild this pair which are off an almost identical car um, and then I can swap them over as one assembly when um, it suits me so I've ordered a rebuild kit from SU Berlin well actually they came from DSG Carburation but they were the stockists they're actually manufactured and supplied by SU Berlin um, there's a couple of bits I'm waiting for that haven't arrived yet because I want to replace the um, standard throttle discs which have the little poppet overrun valves in it. I want to replace them with plain discs. I'll start stripping this down and explain. Actually I can explain with these ones. I should explain. I'm wearing my pyjama bottoms and crocs because I'm halfway through cooking dinner and I just got bored of waiting for haggis to boil so I thought I'd come down and play cars instead. That's the throttle disc. You can just see the back side of it there looking like that and these carburetors are fitted with an overrun valve which is just a tiny little um, valve, spring valve. It's not thermostatic or anything, there's no wax in there, it's literally the spring holds it shut what happens is i mean i should say this is an emissions control device a crude one if the engine is running and the driver closes the throttle suddenly there's obviously a vacuum on the engine side on the intake side and that will suck the valve open and allow air through reason being if it didn't have that valve in it, when the throttle slams shut, it creates low pressure this side and that can actually draw fuel through and mean that momentarily it runs rich and your emissions go really high. So what the clever people did was fit that valve there and that does two things. One is it allows air to go through by opening, um, which basically means air can go through so you don't run rich and also it stops the depression it stops fuel getting sucked through as well um, but the reason they're not so great is twofold one is that when the throttle is open like that the valve and its spring actually creates an obstruction to flow so your I don't know whether you call it pumping efficiency or whatever, but basically that's an obstruction to flow, so you'll get less air through than if you had a plain one. The other problem is when these get old or weak, and these are brand new so it doesn't matter, but the ones that are in there, the springs can um, degrade, I guess. Well, I don't know whether that's true, but people seem to think and suggest that that can happen. The spring gets weak and basically this can be opening when you don't even want it to. So when I rebuild these I'm going to fit plain discs. It's just they haven't arrived yet. Just started pulling this apart and um, I've paused for a moment just to say my approach is take loads of photos first and do them one at a time because I don't want any of the parts from this one to get confused with that one because um, this dash pot and that suction chamber and this piston they're matched 
so you can't interchange them. This will have worn and been ever so slightly machined to just match that dash pot and we'll check how worn they are by um, taking the spring out, taking the damper out and just doing the drop test. So you let the um, suction chamber, well actually that's the suction chamber, this piston thing, you basically drop it in there and time how long it takes for it to fall in just through gravity and the air resistance of exhausting the air out of there. But um, you can find other videos on that if you want. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna continue stripping things down. I was gonna take all the linkages and send them for zinc passivating, but they actually look really nice under that crap. So I'm just gonna strip it all down and start cleaning stuff. These carbs came off an engine that had done about 50,000 miles, but hadn't run in an extremely long time and it did run when I bought the car. Well, I didn't buy the car, I bought the engine out of the car. A uh, guy was braking it. And um, it did run, which is quite miraculous when you see the powdered, dried fuel left in there. But good news is that the float looks okay. Everything still works in there, which is why the car, you know, did actually run before it got pulled apart. Um, in the kit you get all sorts of goodies you get basically a spindle spindle bushings which are little phosphor bronze or impregnated ones needles jets little filters all of the gaskets and rings um, the spring loaded little valves those kiddies with the little um, rubber cap which is good so um, we'll get to all that later ignore the radio in the background <clears throat> just progressively taking things apart taken the throttle disc out and the main spindle the throttle disc screws are split on their ends uh, you can't really see it there but they're flared out so you have to squeeze them together before you try and do them, otherwise you'll just round the heads off. That's the spindle removed. This car had done low miles and it's kind of shown because there's no wear lip on the spindle whatsoever. And that means that the bearings in here will probably be similarly little worn. So it's debatable whether I even bother replacing them. I do have new spindles in the kit and new bearings or bushings I guess you should call them like so but um, I'll make an assessment as to whether I actually need to drive these out and put new ones. What is quite apparent is just how horrible the old spindle seals were. So there's one there and it is like rock hard plastic. In fact I can crack it with my fingers and it just splits and breaks up. There's no give or elasticity in it anymore whatsoever. So that would have worn out really quickly and leaked lots of air. That is a brand new one, nice and squidgy and supple, basically like a lip seal so it can go back in there. I'll clean all this stuff up before I fit it. Um, I am super pleased with the lack of corrosion to any of this. I've cleaned it up with brake cleaner. I was going to send all of this away to be zinc passivated but I just don't think I'm going to need to. That's great because then I can put it back together. There's no downtime waiting for stuff to come back from the platers. That's carburetor number one. Completely dismantled. The only bit that put up a bit of a fight was the needle because it had just sort of corroded. Not corroded, just fuel evaporation into the underside of the piston but everything is looking very healthy indeed um, even the choke that's all looking lovely nowhere in here apparent nice clean fit just will need new o-rings which are in the kit um, so that's one body completely stripped down the only thing I didn't take out was the little valve there because I don't know how it comes apart and I don't have any parts to replace it the housing under there it's tempting to try and undo that bolt but again not going to bother the olive for the fuel in I don't have a new one so I'm not going to mess with that 
and that little stainless clip that'll come out but other than that everything is off that's going to come off number one done number two still to do but it's all the same process so it's just a case of being very careful and lots and lots of photographs I've come to work today that's the right hand carburetor all stripped down keeping them separate left and right and in here in this ultrasonic cleaner we have the carb body from the left side that's been in there for about 10 minutes and it's in a solution of cleaning fluid and already it's coming up the water was effectively clear now it's going black there's an awful lot of crap come off that already um, which is very nice indeed so I'm just going to leave that soaking and rotate it periodically and we should by the end of the day have lots of nice shiny clean parts <clears throat> incidentally that's the fluid I'm using just a quick follow up this stuff is extremely aggressive <clears throat> so I just took that out and washed it and um, whatever is in there, that solution, it's probably a bit strong because it's turning the alley black. So literally I'm using, leaving it in there for like a few minutes at a time and they're coming out lovely. So um, I'm not going to walk away and leave it. I'm actually going to make sure I don't ruin anything. A quick before and after. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The solution does leave the alloy darkened. It does come up if you rub it with either Brillo pad or um, brass brush. But uh, what it's telling me is I don't want to leave stuff in there for the more than about 10, 15 minutes, or it will just discolor it and make it look rubbish. So I'm gonna now put that one in there and see what happens to that kitty. Good bloop. So again, that is undiluted cleaning fluid it's on 63 minutes now and it's on 34 degrees C and I'll just show you what that does in like five minutes okay that has now been going for five minutes and I have some water ready this is the big reveal I hope that has actually done something Sometimes it's not always apparent, but I haven't rotated it either. See, I haven't had to lift a finger, and already the dirt is just coming off. So a bit if I wipe that with my finger, it's just dissolved it. So all I need to do now is agitate that with a brush, and it will come up lovely and clean. Right, all of my bits and pieces have arrived, including my new plain throttle discs to replace the ones that have the overrun valve. Some of these bits I cleaned up last weekend with the ultrasonic parts cleaner. The other bits that had the passivate on them, I didn't, I didn't want to damage them. So they're just soaking in petrol. Once they've had a little bit of a soak, I shall clean them up with toothbrushes. And then it'll be time to put it all back together again and to help me with that I have my workshop manual which um, alarmingly right at the start talks about don't strip the carburetor down you can clean it but don't do things like take the jets out so it's a bit scary but anyway it does have um, all of the specs for assembling it to um, first sort of approximation in order to get the thing running so things like setting the float height and also the height of the jet relative to the bridge and um, I did see that in here we go so straight edge across there and then you move the jet up and down on its screw the mixture screw uh, which will be that one when we get to it so I'm going to do more boring stuff cleaning really okay I've just started refreshing my memory on how to put these back together again I have my books 
and I have photographs of when I took it all apart. First thing I've done is put the float in with a little needle valve in there as well. You have to reset the height of the float. The manual says with the carb body inverted, the center of the float ridge, which is this bit here, should be one and a half mil or one to one and a half mil below the body. So if you put a straight edge across here, the distance between the underside of the ruler in that middle of the bridge should be one to one and a half mil. Uh, I'm actually going for one and a half mil because this is the How to Power Tune Your Rover V8 book by Des Hamill, which is a really super book actually. Very interesting. And in here, it says, Float level, float level must be set to the factory specs. One to one and a half, one and a half makes sure there's slightly more fuel in the bowl, which is an advantage. So I'm gonna go for one and a half mil. So what I need to do, and I'll have to put the camera down for just a minute, is um, progressively bend the little brass tab there so that when the float is at its neutral position, it sits one and a half mil below. Next we have the new jet head and the bimetallic strip. That needs to go in there. Um, and then there's that and the special spring which is over here. Yeah, oh, come here. That's all pretty straightforward. And then that thing which goes through the side of the body. That's the mixture screw. That needs a new O-ring, which I think is that one there. So I've got my jet head in there. At the moment, that is sitting proud of the bridge. The book says to set it, to adjust it until it's level with a straight edge and then go clockwise two and a half turns so that's as you screw that in it pushes on the 90 degree bit of that biometallic strip and pulls that whole assembly down so that's what i'll do that's everything on the underside done so i'm going to fit my new o-ring and then fit the cap on the bottom and that well obviously is for that pickup i've just swapped over if i can remember what i've done with it new throttle spindle. I debated whether or not to even change it. There's basically so little wear on this that I needn't have bothered. You can't even feel it. You can see some slight, slight shadowing, but nothing major. The kit comes with new um, bushes for the throttle housing, but I'm not gonna change them. Um, mine are perfect. This through there fits perfect. There's no play because there's no wear. So I'm just going to go with the originals. There's literally nothing. Um, if I was to change them and screw it up, then I would be in a whole world of hurt. So hence not bothering. This is my new plain throttle disc. So it doesn't have that overrun valve in it, which I can't remember whether I explained, but it's an emissions control thing and basically the spring can get weak and allow air to go through when you don't want it to. And even when it's at wide open throttle, you've got all of that hanging in the airflow, which is a bit of a restriction. So I've swapped it for the plain ones. Those are the screws. One thing I'm not super happy with is the disc is not exactly the same size as the other one. It's actually a tad smaller. So I'm going to fit it on the spindle and see what it looks like. but. At the minute, it doesn't look great. Needn't have worried, fits perfect. Closes up nice, no air gaps. Uh, I just need to take it back out and then fit my new lip seals. Butterfly in, screws are in. I just need to 
stick a flat blade screwdriver in them and open them up so that they can't rattle loose. Um, the seals are in as well. Just as an aside, if the, these do go a particular way round, um, the way I looked at it is that the numbers, if they have numbers, are stamped on the side that runs into the engine. So that as the throttle disc shuts, the overrun valve opens, sucking air in. Um, one is an oval hole, this side, that one's round. So that's how I've done it and it seems to work oh, rather nicely. Next up is the choke bit. So that's the outer barrel thing. I don't know what the technical terms are for a lot of these bits. I could look them up in the book, I kind of can't be bothered. So I need to fit a new o-ring on there. I've cleaned out all of that inside there. I've cleaned out all of this, all of the little ports and grooves and I gave it a very quick rub down with some Brillo. But the idea is that goes in there, that goes in on top. That plate goes on, there's a felt washer, I think. One of these. Uh, it might, is that for that? I can't remember, that might also go on there too. Under the top, um, and then that sits on top. There is actually a little indentation there. And when you look, the same here as well. And that's because it goes that way round and the head of one of the bolts actually goes through there like so. So and this, that should help you get it all the way round. If in doubt, we have the workshop manual here. So yeah, there's some kind of felt washer, o-ring, then seals on the outboard end, I think. One is the seal and then that is the little cover which goes over the top, like so. that goes on there then that that must go somewhere else we'll see just been messing around got the choke in I've got the springs in I'm just playing with the linkages so that when it's actually closed um, the butterfly is actually sitting against the walls there It'll all have to be adjusted up when it's on the car and running. And it'll probably need a rolling road session for all of that. I've also just realised that in my kit, it doesn't come with the new needles, which is quite annoying, which means I won't be able to fully put it back together today. So I'm going to do a little bit more, and then I'm going to pack up and go home. But there really isn't much else to do. Um, just the suction chamber. But there's no point in really doing that because I don't have the needle. Brilliant. Again, apologies for this. I'm returning back to the carburetors. I don't think I touched these in the last month or so. <clears throat> My new needles have arrived. BAK, which is standard for the Rover VAS that I've got. Just need the spring off that one. Then I can put its little cap back on. Then that's the little grub screw that goes through the side of the piston and then it can all go back together and then that will be one whole carburetor done the other one is cleaned and I've got the bits ready the only thing I'm missing from that one is again another needle um, I ordered two but the guy only posted one so a bit of a delay once again this is where I love having these old school manuals so there's our needle spring and the little guidey cup thing and it has a little arrow on the bottom there um, which basically points to this bit so that when the grub screw goes from the side it actually goes into that slot as illustrated here so um, it goes in until the base of this cartridge is level with the base of the piston so that's one done happy with that of course i won't really know what it's like till it's on the car and running but it's as good as i can get it this stage 
just got the other one to do so it's still broken down into all its component parts and I'll do exactly the same as I did last time but this time I might have the GoPro running so you can see me dropping things breaking things getting angry um, all those sorts of things that people like to do in garages it's been a while but I finally have my missing needle so I can finally put the carburetors back together um, I think I showed that I mean part of the problem with me doing videos is I'm really not organized at all I try to be and I am getting better but not much better so um, I will now dig out the little thingy jiggy and then put it together and then we are done.